Continuing with Channel 4 Schools, welcome to the world of science. This is electricity. Electricity from the moon. No, I didn't believe it either, but it's true. This man is on a mission to a power station that makes this electricity. He doesn't need a rocket to get to it either. This is the power station in Brittany on the west coast of France. The machine room is in there, 17 meters under the dam. It's in a reinforced concrete bunker hollowed out of the rock under the sea. This is the control room. At a flick of a switch, they can collect enough energy to power a small city without burning one lump of coal, one barrel of oil, one tank of gas, and without using any nuclear fuel. But this moon power isn't top secret. This facility has been known about for 30 years, before this power worker was born. But how does this power station make electricity from the moon? Three hundred years ago, a man called Isaac Newton noticed that the moon made the oceans move. The sea has enormous power. Waves have sunk great ships and smashed huge buildings. Tides have flooded homes and destroyed acres of land. But the power of tides and waves come from different sources. Waves are blown by the wind, whereas the tides are caused by the moon. Isaac Newton discovered that all the objects in the universe are attracted to each other by a force. He called this gravity. Gravity explained why people didn't fall off the Earth. The Moon is the nearest thing in space to the Earth. Because of gravity, the Earth and the Moon attract each other. So what's this got to do with the Moon and the tides? Well, to begin with, Two-thirds of the Earth is covered with water, and these forces pull the water in the oceans away from the Earth. In this way, the Moon makes the tides. The bulges are called high tides, and the shallower places are called low tides. Back in Brittany, by the sea, you can see the tides come in and go out twice a day. Because it takes several hours, it's not always very noticeable. But if you could speed time up like this, you would notice that the moon is moving an enormous amount of water.
With all that energy boned up and all that moving water, why hasn't someone made use of it before? Well, they have. And it was a long time ago. Here's a power station that they made earlier. Hundreds of years earlier. Not much of a lunar power station, is it? It's old and deserted now, but it did used to work. And yes, by using power from the moon, by using the tides. But they didn't turn the energy into electricity. They hadn't discovered that yet. They made the energy turn a huge wooden wheel. And they used the wheel to grind grain into flour. Imagine hundreds of years ago, someone notices the tides rush up the estuary. At this site, the tide can rise more than 13 meters in six hours. That's higher than this mill. Sensibly, they build their mill above the high tide mark. They also make sure it's next to a small cove. But how do they make the tide of water turn their wheel? They build a dam or a dike across the cove. When the tide comes in, a gate is open to let the water into the cove. Before the tide goes out, the gate is closed. The water gets trapped in the cove. The tide goes out. And the water on the other side drops. The water is then let out of the cove and pushes a wheel making it turn. All because of the moon. As sure as day follows night, the tides will go in and out. Legends have been built around them. There is an old story about a king called Canute. His people believed he was all powerful and that he could control everything, including the tides. But the king knew he couldn't stop nature. So to prove it one day, he sat in the chair by the water's edge and told the sea to stop advancing. He got very wet. The power of the tides can be seen all around the world. But the difference between high and low tides is greater in some places than in others. This is because there are bays and headlands that trap the water as the ocean is pulled towards them. The tides in the estuary of the River Rance here in Brittany are some of the highest in the world. This is why so many water mills have been built here. But further down the coast is today's working tidal power station. This power station uses the movement of the tides and turns it into electricity. How does it control such enormous power? The secret lies under the dam. Normally you can't see these things because they are underwater. But today one of them is being cleaned and the water has been pumped out of its chamber. This is one of the power station's 24 turbines. This side faces the sea. When the tide rushes through them, the sea can push the blades around to make the wheels spin at nearly 100 turns a minute. On the other side of the blades is an enormous bulb. It looks like a submarine. Inside here is the wheel that spins huge electromagnets to make electricity. Electricity from the moon. The moon pulls the water to make tides. 
The tides are the movement of vast amounts of water. This water is forced up Laurent's estuary, only to find a dam in the way. Under the dam are 24 wheels in hollow chambers. On each wheel are four blades. As the sea rushes past the blades, it pushes them to make the wheels turn. The wheels spin electromagnets inside the bulb. Spinning magnets make electricity. The problem with tidal power is that it depends on where the moon is. And the moon may not always be in the best place when you need the most power. Like when people go home to cook a meal and switch the TV on. Hence the gates. These gates are used just like the ones in the old water mill upstream. When the tide comes in, the gates can be opened to fill the basin. When the tide goes out six hours later, they can be closed to keep the water in the basin. When the power is needed, the water in the basin can be let out, but not through the gates, through the turbines. Once the wheels start spinning and the electricity begins to flow, it has to be controlled by switches and computers in the underground machine room. If you put all this electricity into a person's home at the same time, there would be more than a few blown light bulbs. So the wires and cables carry the electricity to a nearby collecting station. From here, it is sent to the homes and factories of France. Although the electrical circuit is huge and carries vast amounts of energy, it works just like any other circuit. In order for the electricity to flow, it has to have a complete circuit. If the power station only had one wire going to a person's home, it wouldn't work. It has to have another wire coming back. That's why when a gap is put into the circuit, the electricity stops flowing. So although the moon keeps rotating around the earth and the tides keep going in and out, the power workers can stop the electricity any time they like at the flick of a switch. It can be difficult to make electricity without harming the environment. But there is unlimited power in nature. Light from the sun, heat from the earth, electricity from the moon. This power station at La Ronce is an example of how we can use energy from nature without destroying the environment or the life of the people who live here. The dam is used as a road for travelers from Dinar to San Malo, and the locks in the dam enable thousands of sailboats to pass through every year. In fact, far from looking like a power station, La Ronce looks more like a leisure center. The tourists who visit the plant have discovered its secrets. But I wonder how many of the local inhabitants realize when they go home at night and switch on their lights that their electricity comes from the moon. Yeah.